Hello. Welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally like to talk a lot of bollocks. Tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a Tableau engine building game. We're going to be talking about Race for the Galaxy. And in this game, you will be playing cards from your hand into your Tableau that will eventually give you victory points that will allow you to win the game. So in this video, we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules. We'll be telling you what we do like, what we don't like. We'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not Race for the Galaxy is still worth playing 16 years after it was first released in 2007. So remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel with the like button on that YouTube bullshit. See you after this. Bollocks. So, Race for the Galaxy, how do you play this game? So Race for the Galaxy is a Tableau engine building game. There are two main concepts in this game that you need to get your head around before you start playing, right? There's two types of cards. You've got developments and you have got planets, right? The planets can be further distinguished by the type of planet they are. You've got production planets, which are symbolized by having a solid color inside the circle. Then you've got non-production planets that are going to have white or gray inside the circle. Further to this, you've got military planets, which are denoted by the red ring around them and the red number inside the planet and then you've got windfall planets that have like a halo glow around them yeah a bit like my big head when i look in the mirror so each player is going to get a hand of action cards you're going to have six normal cards you're going to dump two and keep four so everyone's going to choose one of their action cards and it will place it face down on the table and then once everyone's chosen everyone will reveal and then those actions will be resolved in a specific order everybody will get to take all of those actions but if you're the one that's played the card then you'll get a bonus associated with it think of like puerto rico when you choose a roll Top card you know so the first action that you could do is the explore action this is a way of getting cards into your hand basic action allows you to draw two cards and keep one but there's two explore cards you could play each of them has a different bonus one of the bonuses is you get to draw an extra five cards in your hand so that's going to give you seven you still only get to keep one and the other one is that you get to draw two more cards and you get to keep an extra one right so one of them could be used if you're searching for a specific type of card and the other one is if you just need to get more cards into your hand so the next action you could do is develop right the basic action is you'll be able to play a development card which are the cards with the diamonds on you'll be able to play one of these into your tableau right you'll have to pay the cost inside the diamond and because there's no money in this game you'll have to give up cards from your hand in order to pay for it yeah so if the development costs two you'll have to choose two cards from your hand and dump them on a discard pile the bonus for this action is that you get a discount of one when you're playing a development so next action is settle you'll be able to play one of those planet cards into your tableau bang bang settle it the bonus lets you draw a card into your hand from the draw deck like we said there's different types of planets if you're going to play a military planet you don't have to pay anything right all you got to do is make sure that you've got enough military strength if you look at the military cards in front of you on phase three that'll give you like a plus or a minus you've got to make sure that you can equal or exceed the military strength of the planet that you're trying to do over and there's also windfall planets these will give you a good when you build them they're not going to produce anything but they're going to give you a good right when planets produce goods you'll draw a card from the top of the draw deck and you'll slide it underneath and this will represent that the planet has a good on it so the next action you could do is you can consume any planets that have got goods on them they will be consumed and there's two cards for this as well right one will allow you to trade before you consume which means that you can give up a good to draw more cards in your hand dependent on what planet it is so if you've got an alien planet it's going to give you more cards than if you've got a commodities planet you know and the other card will just double the victory points that are awarded when you consume right so the final action is you get to produce any planets that have got a produce action on them will produce goods you'll take a car from the draw deck and you'll slide it underneath right planets can only have one good on them at any time right so it's no good trying to slightly put another card under there right because you'll get done over and a bonus is that you get to produce on a windfall planet right this is an exception to the rule that windfall planets only produce when you first play them right so bear that in mind sneaky little shit so keep doing this you will keep on playing cards from your hand and the game will end when all the victory points in the supply in the center of the table have been depleted or somebody builds their 12th card and then the player with the most victory points will be the winner of race for the galaxy so what do we like about race for the galaxy 
So the first thing we like about this game is that there is multiple paths to victory. Are you going to take the economic pathway where you're going to be building cards, doing trades, getting more cards into your hand, building up an engine that way? Are you going to be going down the military route where you're going to be bumping up your military, trying to get to those lucrative cards that are going to give you like six victory points yet? Or are you going to go down the imperialist route where you're just trying to take over as many planets as possible and go for all those victory points there, right? Lots of different cards are going to allow you to achieve this. A lot of cards work together in tandem there's two of each card in the deck you can only ever have one of them right you've got to remember that and some of the cards you might come across you might come across spice world and if you've seen the movie you'll know how good this card actually is and this card produces a commodity and it will let you trade commodities and draw two cards into your hand or you might do what's happening in the uk at the moment you might have deficit spending and this says you may discard up to two cards to gain one victory point a piece these victory points may not be double right so this won't let you activate the spending special ability of the action right or you might end up playing the last uplift ganache and this literally gives you one victory point and does fuck all else yeah and i'm not surprised because the dudes on a picture look like they've just done a bunch of heroin so there's loads of variety in this game if you've got the expansions it's going to give you more cards more stuff yeah it's going to give you some goals and all that so yeah can't really grumble that there's not really that much to do in this game so the next thing that we really like about race for the galaxy is it's quite satisfying watching your engine build up and pulling off a cataclysmic combo towards the end right this game starts off really slow you're not going to be able to do much in the first few rounds of this game you might be able to maybe build a development or maybe get one or two goods under your planets yeah but as time goes by the engine starts to get oiled up yeah everyone likes getting oiled up don't they and then when you finally get that card that's going to allow you to pull the trigger then oh, gives me like goosebumps you know what i mean so the final thing we really like about this game and it's like an understated thing in this game is that we really quite like the artwork it stands in stark contrast to other tableau building games like arc nova where you've got this photographic style lifelike aesthetic going on right this reminds us of like a 2000 ad type thing it's got its own identity it doesn't look like any other games right and as such it commands its own space in my little dungeon here so yeah all the cards have different art work obviously they're doubled up yeah but i don't give a shit about that they're all quite detailed and we really do like the way that this game looks even if it is just a bunch of shitty cards yeah but don't be like but race for the galaxy so the first thing and the real bugbear with this is the fact that this game is so heavily based on icons yeah there is a bit of text on the cards that's going to allow you to sort of at least decipher what's going on but even then the font that they've used is really 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 small and even if i pulled my monocle out my arsehole i still wouldn't be able to see it right this game is a complete and utter bastard to teach right as such it puts me off planet yeah i look at race of the galaxy on the shelf over there and i think it can't be asked to go through the rigmarole that it takes to try and get this stuff into people's heads and it's usually the consume and produce mechanism that really trips people up here yeah? the fact that you've got to consume before you produce it's sort of a counterintuitive thing and all the different nuances with all the different cards yeah you're gonna have to play this multiple times before you really do understand what's going on and i know some of you at the back are sitting there thinking well i got it first time well don't give a flying fuck because you walk on fucking water every day of the week don't you but yeah this game is a complete and utter arsehole to teach and as such really sort of drags the game down just a little bit you know so second thing that we don't like about race for the galaxy is there certain timing issues that aren't really explained in a rule book the rule book does say that everybody plays a car face down and is revealed and this game acts on a simultaneous level yeah but the problem with that is is that how do you decide who takes cards from the top of the deck first there's no real first player and you don't go clockwise or anything like that so when somebody draws seven cards from the deck or maybe more they might have like special abilities let them draw 10 cards then the card that you want might be in that bundle they're going to discard and there's not really any sort of way to discern who goes first right so that seems like a little bit unfair to me should have been some first player token or something or some way of determining who gets to draw from the draw deck first right so the final thing that we don't like about race for the galaxy is that there is little to no player interaction in this game it is what's called a multiplayer solitaire game and if that is something that you detest then you might as well fuck off now and play something else yeah one of the expansions did add a little bit of take that or something similar but we don't generally play with the third expansion because it adds too many icons too much more to think about first two expansions just add more cards so effectively you're going to be playing with yourself and ordinarily that is not a bad thing but i'd rather be playing with other people do you know what i mean so is race for the galaxy still worth your time and bother today and in the future
So we are going to say, yes, Race for the Galaxy is a superb tableau engine building game that set the stage for games like Seven Wonders and Terraforming Mars. And in my opinion, Terraforming Mars wouldn't have existed had Race for the Galaxy been created, you know. The iconography is a real pain in the bum bum. And you're going to have to play this quite a few times before you even get to understand the way that the cards work together and all the icons in the game, yeah. But this is a simple case of if you invest the time in into this game then the rewards that it gives you are well worth it yeah so there you go that is race for the galaxy remember if you're new here then please consider subscribing to this channel hit the like button on that youtube bullshit we'll see you next time